significant differences across those contexts. But Thomas, I wanted to ask you, because this is also something that was brought up in previous sessions, in terms of the work you've been doing with communities through terrorist lines, and in light of the sustained economic crisis that Venezuela is going through, do you see this as being sustainable? Like, is it something that we can really um, aspire will last over the years? Or is it like short term interventions that you're currently doing to mitigate the direct uh, outcomes of the crisis? Yes, that's a great question. I think the trust lines uh, solution that we are presenting right now related to, for example, giving change back or I use back is momentary, but the use of the app is long term because it works with several different currency networks. I was talking about the Amandi use case because that's the one that we're starting next month, but we also have... Thomas, I can't... Uh, I can't. Dollars or money at all. It's what? Um, you cut off for, uh, for a minute. If you can just repeat your last sentence, please. We lost you. Yes. For a bit. I will perhaps turn off the camera to improve my signal. Give me a second. So what I was saying is, um, uh, perhaps this idea of a single case study based on giving change back because there's not enough cash may be momentarily, but may serve momentarily. But the idea of the entire trust lines protocol, it's long term. We have other case studies not related to giving change back and not even related to currency as we know it, not as money, but using time as a currency and using favors as a currency in different co-working spaces in which uh, different projects and different entrepreneurial uh, projects leave and exchange favors and time of their work. And these ones will be launching next month too. In terms of... Um, these solutions for Venezuela and for every other country, there is, um, I've reached the conclusion that people working on projects must be very empathetic uh, towards the problems a society has, understand them really well. And they also have to let people be free to use the tools they create as they need them. Uh, one of the things we were discussing was related to this. I, I may have created a hammer and when I created this hammer, I had in my mind that it would be used uh, to hammer nails, to build things out of wood. But when I put it out, people started using the hammer for something else. And I have to be very vigilant of what they're using it so I can improve my next hammer or the next version of the hammer so that it suits those activities better. And it is one of the principles that we are, uh, we are incorporating to the, to the project is learning and um, that's why research was such a huge and important step to discovering what the problems that we were facing were and to set up the first first phase which is to solve this specific problem just to reach a broader audience and be able to communicate broadly the benefits and the risks of using this sort of technology and seeing what people do with them for example we never thought about this but it came up during discussion with the people there as i said dollars are commodity an asset so uh, immediately some people said said well i leave from buying and selling and selling us dollars that's that's what i do i'm sort of like an informal exchange house perhaps i could use this um platform to help me do that in a better way so i can deal better with liquidity in terms of cash flow or other uh networks of currency and, and we, that didn't even cross our minds at first, but it's what people can use it. And if it's a tool that is, if people find a tool useful in more than the single use it was created for, it, would, it will live longer. I think that's my, my conclusion to that question. Thanks, uh, Thomas. Actually, yeah, it's 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 very true. It's how people sometimes repurpose a technology and make it more adaptable.